Welcome to Season 3 of On The Spot. Welcome back. The conversation still continues from last week where my guest Mahmoud Bla shared so much about his experience coming to the UAE and getting stuck here and somehow making a living out of it. It was really a tough journey having to lose $45,000, you know, moving from $45,000 to nearly uh, $50 and at some point $0. How did he survive? How did he live through it? And today, He's doing so well. If you missed last week's conversation, please go and watch it to get a good understanding of the conversation today. Welcome back, uh, Mahmoud. Thank you very much and thank you for having me. Yes, I know a lot of uh, people who may have missed the conversation last week, they should go and watch it. But we obviously are continuing the conversation. So, um, you know, you, you know, you got this help in hand, you know, someone who, you know, God works in mysterious ways and he always sends people one way or the other to support us through, even in our darkest moment. Yeah. And I know that's what happened for you. Yep. So you you know, found this person who was like, I'm going to support you through, go find a job. I want you to let us understand how you found that job, because that for me is really interesting. Yeah, so um, like I said last week, welcome back anyway, viewers. <laughs> uh, so I was there washing cars yeah. for a living, and um, again, going for my prayers, yeah. because I, I didn't joke with that. Despite all these hurdles, yeah. I still believe in God, and mm -hmm. I still pray five times a day. So. Yeah. When I'm going for the Zuro Asr prayers, you know how hot this is, where mm -hmm. I was washing car, it's almost 65 degrees Celsius wow. during the day, especially when it's at a peak in the noon. Wow. So it's really tough. So I was uh, praying one day, and like I explained earlier on, a doctor who was in the hospital at Asr came down and was observing me over, some, you know, for a few days and knew that I would always try to skip the congregation prayers. Yeah. So he wanted to know why. And then um, he spoke to me and I explained tell me part of my story. So he felt like, look, you're a qualified teacher and I believe a lot of schools in this country will be blessed to have you. Yeah. So I want you to go out there and look for a job Good of job. your choice. Forget whatever has happened. My support to you, I'll provide you with an accommodation. I'll provide you with food and I'll provide you with transportation. Wow. So you go out there. You, I don't know how you're going to do it, but find a job. Yeah. So the following day, it was on a Saturday, and by then the working day start on a Sunday in the UAE. So mm -hmm. I decided to dress up with the only suit wow. that I had to this country. I, I dressed somehow formal, and then I got into school. When I got to the school, I met an interview of about 19 candidates. Mm -hmm. And you know how it is in the UAE. You have more than thousands of applications for a single job. Yeah. And then there's a screening process, mm -hmm. and then a short list until we get to about 20. And then they keep screening. Maybe for just one job, you have more than 1,000 applicants. Yeah. So I was not shortlisted. I, I don't even have my certificates with me at the right. time. I don't even have my CV printed. I only had it in soft copy. Wow. So I walked into the school and I met the HR, I said, look, I, I want to be interviewed. My name is Mahmoud Ahmed and I want an interview. They can easily call the police. Wow. But lucky for me, she said, we, we don't have you in our shortlist. And besides, we have 19 candidates waiting to be interviewed. So you don't stand a chance. Go apply. Give me a, an email. I said, I can't do this. I want to be interviewed. So he said, I, she said, I can't do this. Definitely. And you, you definitely have to wait outside. So I went out and I was sitting there for almost three hours. Wow. Without food by then. <laughs> so uh, after the 19 candidates have been interviewed, she still passed by and then she saw me sitting there. I was like, okay, she went into the principal's office. I think she actually told the principal the situation. And then the principal came out and looked at me once and then went back to our office. Um, then, then I, I, I don't want to start calling names because I didn't don't, inform them yes. that I'm going to do no, it anyway. Please don't, yeah. So, she came in and then she said, okay, you can see the principal. So I went to the principal's office. She was at first not crossed because I said, look, you can just walk into the school in this country and ask to be interviewed. Where are your papers? Where is your CV? I said, it's in my own my phone. Wow. <laughs> so what, are, you, are you kidding me? Where are your certificates? I said, I don't have them, but I just want an interview. So that's how the conversation started. He felt like this is, this is unreal. 
for because she has never seen this. She's never the seen boldness. So, yes. So we had a short interview on education pedagogies and of course examination of ESA skills. So we start talking and by then I've been teaching the Cambridge curriculum for about four years already and in Gambia, I was actually um, part of the examination board and I'm wow. also the head of mathematics in Sebek International School at the time. Wow. So I had a lot of knowledge on the Cambridge um, um, curriculum, wow. which was actually the curriculum they offered in the school. Wow. So we spoke about it and she was very interested. So she called um, the head of academics. And, and basically, you obviously did amazingly well and somehow that kick-started your first job. That is it. That's where Somehow. I started. And, and I started working when I was just a tourist, so I had to work like a visitor wow. and making some few hundreds to eat and to survive. And, and today, you are the governor of the school. I, I don't know how they put it, or part of the governors of the school. You also are part of the board of the Shaja. Take us Education through. I, I mean, this is really huge. Yeah, so I started off there, and I'm not presently teaching in the school because some reasons I had to, to change after all, yeah. because the principal left. Oh, wow. So because of that, I felt... Um, I should also change up. Yeah. But by then, I've already got my certificates here. I've got them attested. That's another thing that other teachers need to know, especially in interviews, where I'll be talking about opportunities of teachers yeah. coming to this country. I will yeah. explain the process. Yeah. You need to get your document attested. And once you've got them attested and you start the equivalency process, yeah. you are now qualified to apply for jobs. So okay. I applied, I go interviews again, and I got myself in the school where I am presently. And um, again, your salary is definitely going to be far less than people from the UK and America, but you have oh, to be prepared. You have to start somewhere. Yes. So I was right. dedicated. I keep showing what I can do. I keep being the outstanding person I believe I am, irrespective of where I come from. Yeah. And the good thing about this country is if you are outstanding, if you are doing well in what you're doing, you definitely have people who will support you and support you. Wow. So my school chose me actually when the, the Sheikh of Saja, Mohammed um, Al-Qasim, wanted to bring in a teaching degree, which is the postgraduate diploma from the wow. Saja University and affiliated with Helsinki University in yeah. Finland. So he, the, the course is about $7,500. So he offered to pay up to 50% of that amount for wow. any teacher who is qualified. Wonderful. And um, I was selected by my school. And the school don't only select me for the scholarship, they also offered to pay 25% of that amount. That's so it means I'm, I'm paying far less than I should pay and I'm enrolled. And just in the first semester, I am made the public relation officer of the university. And presently, I'm working Wonderful. hand in gloves with faculty in educational policies and how to run the student cancer. Wonderful. Wow. That's a really good story there, uh, Mahmoud. We'll take another break. This is On The Spot. Still a lot more to come. Don't touch that dial. We'll be right back. Welcome back. For those of you just tuning in, Mahmoud is still here with me and we've been talking about the realities or his realities here in Dubai. So you've taught now for a couple of years here. I mean, from 2019, yep. you've been here. This is 2022. Um, you've been here for now for a while. You've, you've really done well in climbing up, uh, you know, the, the wrong when it comes to the educational system here. What are some of the lessons that Sierra Leone can learn because education is pretty high right here and the standards and requirements and qualifications of teachers are also pretty high. What can Sierra Leone learn from the UAE? Yes, um, I believe even Sierra Leone have a vision on where they want the education system to be. Yeah. The UAE also have the vision and their visions are smart. What I mean by this is uh, they are measurable. They have a spe specific timing. Yeah. If I can give an example, um, the UAE had a vision 2021, which means that by 2021, every teacher in the education system should be licensed. And wow. to get the license, you need to take two examinations. One of them is a pedagogy test, yeah. and another is a subject specialization test. When you meet the criteria, they will give you a license, which is renewal every two years. Wonderful. And also in the education system, they have certain pedagogies that have to be met. So when schools have been observed, when there is an inspection that is carried out every year, mm -hmm. schools are rated starting from acceptable, good, very good, and outstanding. And there are criteria or indicators that the school have to showcase, whether private or government, to yeah. be able to achieve this rating. And for teachers to be able to get students to do this, 
teachers need to know how to help students to self-regulate themselves because the education system, especially in this part of the world, has moved on from just a theory-based teaching, which we went through. Yeah. The teacher is the principal, is the yeah. head of the classroom. He command, <laughs> he bombard the knowledge, yes. and you just take it or leave it. To here, the teacher talk time, for example, in my session is like five minutes. You use formative assessment to actually measure the progress of student. So you can Absolutely. only get the skills not by acquiring a subject degree, but by acquiring an education degree. So what I want, uh, I think Sierra Leoneans will learn from this, especially the education system, yeah. is to bring in this education psychologist outside or in top universities that can embed these core values into our system, our education system or our curriculum or education policies wow. that will enable first professional development session for teachers. Yeah. Here in the UAE, a teacher should complete minimum 75 hours of professional development sessions by academic year. It's a must. Wow. It doesn't matter where you get it. You have to go out there and show evidence to show that I have, yes, you have to Absolutely. every year. If you don't meet it, you lose your job. So in wow. Sierra Leone, we need to help our teachers to wow. grow, to be able to know that we have the most recent pedagogies, recent educational psychological concepts yeah. that can be applied in schools yeah. and change this idea of student just going to learn from the teacher yeah. rather than teach student learning to learn by themselves, by self-regulation. Absolutely. So if we can get this into our school system, especially embedding these core values in the education system and providing yeah. extra courses, especially yeah. in the university, for only teachers teaching qualification where yeah. teachers go in to study education psychology yeah. and come out with a teaching degree this will really help to boost the education system in Sierra Leone. Wonderful. And I'm ready to talk about it anytime. <laughs> yes. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, there's so much that can be learned. Yes, so we say thank you. Uh, this is on the spot. We're going to be coming back. But aside from this now, you also provide support to a lot of, and not just only Sierra Leoneans, I presume, but a lot of people who, a lot of black people who have been caught up in the same situation that you had to leave through. Um, we're going to come back and we're just going to talk a little bit about that, how you're providing that support. This is On The Spot. We'll be right back. Welcome back to On The Spot. And, you know, we're just in the round last uh, section of the conversation. Uh, and my guest has been amazing, sharing so much about the realities that he's had to live through um, here in the UAE. Um, having experienced that, you're providing support to other individuals who have found themselves caught up in the same situation that you had to live through. Yeah. What is that support like? That, uh, let me, I'll put the support in two categories actually yeah. we have people who are not educated yeah. who are coming here to look for because definitely um, as someone who is doing a security job can be earning something around 800 to 900 dollars if you have a very good company plus accommodation so it's a pretty much a very good amount for someone who is not educated isn't it yeah but to get into that there are a few um criteria that at least you need to meet because this country you need to show a certificate for whatever you do yeah and they have benchmarks yeah, yeah, yeah. so if you live in your country for example someone is leaving Sierra Leone to come here to look mm -hmm. for a job and you know you're not educated mm -hmm. if you know you want to do a cleaning job just get any certificate to prove that you've been doing the job before yeah. and get it attested so when you come here you have something to show for it and uh, we will talk about the wrong ways people come here later let me yes. just look at the support mm -hmm. now many people come here through the wrong hands scammers are all over the place and they they will post beautiful pictures dubai is a beautiful city Absolutely. you can go many places take pictures and post them they will tell you they're living good trust me it is a big lie if you're watching me many of these guys don't even have their citizenship because here you have what you call a, a citizen id card it simply shows that you're working there which is called the emirate id now what these guys do because probably they are also scammed to come to this country mm -hmm. they will work for six months get a company that will provide them with this emirate id and then they will resign most companies will not cancel their visa wow. nor will they put a ban on them so they will live with that visa for two years now they will rent a place with a little amount they have got and put bunk beds and start becoming agent Wow. Now, they will advertise jobs. I have a job that will pay you $1 million. You have to pay around $300,000 or $4,000. Wow. And coming to, from Sierra Leone to here, the total cost is less than um, 12 million leons in Sierra Leone money. Yeah. The total cost. But they will tell them to pay around $30 million 
or okay. even more. So imagine the profit. Wow. And then they don't even have a job themselves, not to talk of providing job for someone. And then they'll bring in the sisters here, sell them into slavery, or bring in these brothers here and disappear. Now imagine someone in Sierra Leone coming in with two, three hundred dollars, and the cost of living, even at a bunk bed, is about four hundred dollars minimum a month. Now imagine you're coming in with four hundred dollars, maybe for food or stuff and then yeah. you're stuck you don't have money to eat yeah. you don't have money to pay house rent yeah. and after three months each you're day you street. have to pay no not only out of the street every day outside your visa you're paying a fine when you overstay yes yeah. if you stay for three months your fine can accumulate as much as three thousand dollars to four thousand dollars now imagine you don't have a job yet how are you going to pay that and you can't leave without paying no Wow. So I have to go in sometimes the sisters that were sold to slavery because they'll collect your passport and then you can't leave. Mm -hmm. Sometimes because I do have affiliation with a lot of people. So I do speak to them and then we go in, get this passport off. And the embassy, you know, the Sierra Leone embassy is doing an amazing job because we have, for example, Mr. Mansari, who is working Mr. Conte, rather, sorry. Yeah. Mr. Conte, who is working, I, I keep mixing the two names. Okay. But he is mostly going into these prisons and even sometimes going after Sierra Leonean stock or stranded in certain places. Laura, as well, yeah. is another person who is doing the same job. Sometimes they do use me to just go and see, see these places yeah. where they can go, where we can provide support for these people and then try to get them either to return back or probably get them a job somehow. So my advice to people like that coming into this country is first know that it is not going to be easy mm -hmm. and please know who you are coming to. Yeah. Don't just come in through an agent. Mm -hmm. Make sure you know the person that is getting you here. Absolutely. And if possible, try to get someone at least that is living here who is a Sierra Leonean that yes. you know. This way, if anything goes wrong, at least you can have somebody to stay with for a few month or a week or so that can help you which is not always available because many Sierra Leoneans, many Africans here we're living in packed accommodations so it's difficult for somebody to provide you time even because wow. we're working at a very long time here for the education aspect many teachers in Sierra Leone or in Africa in general believe that because here is an Arab country and you speak in English you can just come in and teach mm -hmm. They forgot to see if Dubai is one of the best or most innovative cities in the world. Yes. Everything is the same. The Dubai or UAE is actually trying to merge the education system with the best countries in the world. So they are investing a lot of money in education. So they need standards. So if you're coming here and you've got your bachelor's degree, which is the benchmark to teach here, before leaving the country, try to, of course, if you have a degree, you have a chance. I must tell you, you have a big chance to get a job, you have a big chance to make, and trust me, it doesn't matter how much money you're paid back home, you're definitely going to be paid better here. Mm. That is a good news, that mm. is a bonus. So if you can get your document attested back home in your embassy, yeah. that is the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, yeah. and then you get it done also in the embassy of the UAE in your country. Yeah. When you come to the UAE, you can go to your embassy, that is the embassy of Sierra Leone in Abu Dhabi. Yes. Register your qualifications, get them attested there, and then they know you are here. Yeah. And then you can now go to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in the UAE. All this process can be done in one day, actually. Wow. Okay. Once you've got all this done, there are thousands of jobs advertised online yeah. in Google um, engines like Indeed, yeah. Job Street, and so on. But once you're a teacher, yeah. you must meet one or two teachers that will put you through. Yeah. And if you have the right qualification, you get interviews. But most importantly, something that most teachers from Africa forget, here education is mostly digitalized. Your digital skills need to be equipped. If you live in Sierra Leone, at least understand the features of Microsoft Office. Mm -hmm. You need to know how to use Excel, PowerPoint, yeah. Word, because, for example, through the COVID, the entire education system is run on Microsoft Teams. Yeah. Some schools wow. Zoom somehow, but Microsoft 365 package has everything that everything, a school needs. Yeah. So if you don't know how to use it, they can employ you yeah. because there is a chance there is a pandemic. The school will have to go online maybe for three, four months. Yeah. You have to be able to teach your lessons and regulate all the affairs of the school online. And you're providing a lot of those support and resources to, yes. to people. I, I actually am looking forward to helping Sierra Leoneans to teach them how to use these apps. Yeah. Well, hopefully through you, when you get back home and we can see, I can be sharing Zoom link and I can be online to help teachers, teachers. understand Wonderful. how to use this app. I don't have a problem with that. Wonderful. And as far as you qualify, you want to come here. If I have any way to support you to come and do it, Wonderful. I will definitely do it. And Wonderful. there are still schools in this country that are employing teachers 
from outside the UAE. But so they got to do it through the right channel. Yes. Absolutely. And get this document attested and get through the right channel. There is a lot involved when you're here, but once you're in the system, you can get it done. So you've been here now since 2019. Have you been able to go back quickly as we round up? Have you been able to go back to Sierra Leone, to Gambia? Have you been able to uh, gather enough money to be able to pay back some of the debt? Because that's a whole lot. Um, and I know it's a long process. This, this, is, this is a good question because many of my family members or or friends are always asking me for money, especially now they're probably not going to see me here. They'll be asking me for a lot of, they think I, I have a lot of money. I am not rich. Yeah. I'm still learning. Yeah. And um, I have been able to pay almost 70% oh, of what wow. I took from people. And I'm still paying and I'm still studying at the same time. But you see, you have to be ready. Life will give you different phases. Yeah. It is how ready you are to overcome these obstacles is what makes you an outstanding person. Absolutely. You have to be ready to take risk. You have to be ready to, to fight for what you really believe yeah. in irrespective of who wants to bring you down. Yeah. So yes, I have been able to communicate to most of my people in Gambia, yeah. which is more like a second country to me. Yeah. And Sierra Leone, of course, I'm in touch with uh, most of my family members. Yes. And some of them understand, some don't. Some think I just don't want to help. Yeah. But this it's is the best easy. help I can give to yeah. guide you on how to fish instead of giving you the fish. Absolutely. I will be looking forward to coming to Sierra Leone very soon. Okay. And I really want to create a platform where we can talk about this with colleagues that I believe can... Absolutely. Because many Sierra Leoneans are scared of traveling. Yeah. Trust me, I have spoken to a couple of my friends who just are naive of leaving Sierra Leone to go mm. elsewhere. But you have to be ready for it. Yeah. You have to be ready for the challenges. Yeah. And trust me, there is a lot out here that you can get. If wow. not money, but even knowledge. Absolutely. Thank you so much, yes. Mahmoud Bla. <laughs> Mahmoud, Mahmoud Bla, yes. yes. Thank you so much. I mean, I can't thank you enough. You know, you've just been able to give out so much information that is so important and you know sharing your experience and how you were able to overcome them is just so amazing but like i mentioned you know like we were discussing you had to go through those experiences so that you're able to better provide support to people so you understand the realities and you know how you can support people too as well so that hopefully they do not make the same mistake that you made thank you so much this is on the spot coming up next are my final words thank you in my final words one should continuously strive to improve on themselves as learning is a lifelong process that we must continuously thirst for becoming a better version of who we were yesterday should be our ultimate aim especially as life will throw many challenges along the way. But it is how we choose to react to them that will determine if we succeed or we fail. My guest has shown what determination, tenacity and not giving up in spite of all the odds can achieve and how we can help us change and turn our stories around. No matter what your story may be, you and you alone have the power to change your situation. Thank you for tuning in and I would love to hear your story. Reach out to us via email, our social platforms and our website. Thank you to the Sierra Leone Embassy in Washington, United States of America for supporting the On The Spot show. More definitely coming up next week, but till when we come back on your TV screen, stay fabulous.